Hey guys, welcome back to the channel once again for another of Max's tool reviews. If you're just joining us now, I do a tool review video oh, probably about once a month and there's a playlist for them that I'll throw right up there for you so you can check them all out if you want. But today we're here to talk about my 3M WorkTunes Connect hearing protection earphones. As you can see, I've had this one on my mind for quite a little while now, just over a year. And there are a couple of reasons for that, but mostly because I had to return the first set I got because it was having problems. And those are problems that also exist on the second set as well. So this is going to end up being, I think, my second neutral review where I'm not too terribly thrilled with the product. But I also am not going to tell you that it's total junk because there are some good things about it that I do like. And we'll get into those here in a little bit. The current set that I have right now that we are actually going to talk about, I've had for just slightly under a year at this point. As I'm recording it, today is uh, May 17th, 2020. I would estimate that I've put uh, probably over 100 hours on this set or maybe right around 100 hours on this set. And the original set, probably not more than five or 10 because the return window was closing. I wanted to send them back because they were having trouble. I have given these things a pretty good run for the money just to see what they're all about. And those are typically the type of reviews I like to make. I don't like to take uh, stuff that's just like brand new out of the box and talk about it because I don't think you can learn anything about something straight out of the box, usually. So before we get into the things I don't like about these, let's get into a couple of things that I really do like about these. Uh, first and foremost, the battery life on these things is absolutely incredible. I've gotten to the point on a lot of stuff like this where I quit buying stuff that takes conventional batteries just because it always annoys me to have to go hunt down inside of double A's or triple A's or whatever. So I've been buying more and more things that have integrated rechargeable batteries because the rechargeable battery technology has actually gotten so good over the last few years that you're uh, getting lots and lots of life out of those and seldom do they ever really let you down when you need them and these things are no exception. I think in the entire time I've had these, I might have charged them twice and neither time was it because they said they needed it. Uh, when you turn them on, they'll give you a battery status. Power on, battery medium. And I don't think I've ever heard the thing ever say uh, battery status of low. He said, I'd, I'd be surprised if I charged them more than three times in the last year. And I wear them at least an hour a week for six months of the year just to mow grass. It's probably more like one and a half hours a week. Uh, anytime you've ever seen me run air tools or anything on the channel, these things are almost always on my head. So there are days in the shop where I'll be wearing them for a few hours by the time things are all said and done. And battery life has never been a problem. Battery life on them is absolutely outstanding. So for me, I really like the integrated battery and there's no way I would trade them out for a pair that did not have an integrated battery, such as these. These are probably 10 year old AO Safety Work Tunes. 3M sells these branded as 3M too. You can buy basically the same thing today that run on double A's. And I can't tell you how many times these things did let me down. And the biggest source of that problem is because they have a on off volume knob here and I would come out to these things all the time and find them just click to on and my battery's dead. That, and that absolutely sucked. And then that's one of the reasons why I upgraded from these, which is actually another thing I do like about the 3Ms is everything on them is run by this one button, which is really handy. And you'll find that as far as listening to music on them, this works just like a Bluetooth earpiece would for your phone or a corded pair of headphones like my Sony in canal earphones here that have the button on them for device control. The 3M safety protection headphones work the same way. So, you know, pause, play, answer calls, track, skip, all that stuff on your Apple or Android device, all the same. That said, I've only used these 3M headphones on an Android device. I don't have any Apple stuff, but I assume it, they work fine there as well. And it actually brings up something I don't like about these is that with this one button approach, you don't have any volume control from the freaking headphones. So if you're mowing your grass and you got your phone in your pocket, or if you're you know working with air tools or whatever, and your phone's over on the bench or on your toolbox or whatever, you can't turn stuff up and down without having access to your device, which is just annoying to me. Uh, the one button approach is nice. I get it that it's inexpensive, but one button plus two physical volume buttons would have just been great. That would have made these pretty much the perfect interface as far as human to machine interface, in my opinion, is if these just had three buttons that, you know, with two dedicated to volume. Another thing I like about these things, I find that they're mostly reasonably comfortable or as comfortable as anything like this is going to be. The ear pads themselves aren't like abrasive to your ears or anything like that. They do tend to get kind of hot after you wear them for a couple hours, but again, they're hearing protection. That's the job they're supposed to do is seal out outside air. Uh, the headband itself, although it looks like it's really you know cheap because it frankly is really cheap, is actually very comfortable. You can see that the headband is pretty cheap and you know, it's just thin wire. 
and the adjustment on them is just about as cheap too. You just shove the wires down these plastic ends and when you do it, it's just super janky and they get all crooked and cockeyed and everything. But at least there is plenty of adjustment in them. I've got a pretty giant head and these fit me just fine and you can see you can pull like two inches per side of adjustment back out. So if you have a pretty small head, uh, they would probably also fit you. I don't know if they'd fit a child, but I don't think there are probably too many children that need hearing protection Bluetooth headphones, but those go pretty freaking small. And additionally, I don't find them to be too overly heavy or anything. Put them on my scale there, and the scale says those are 12.28 ounces. Just for reference, let's get out Mr. Old School FM Radio with two double A's in him, and those come up 12.8 ounces. And what's weird is I thought the uh, new ones were actually significantly lighter and turns out they're not they just kind of felt that way on my head maybe they're just a different balance point or something like that and just for another point of reference here are some regular old not at all radio or bluetooth hearing protection and those come in at 10.3 ounces it is worth mentioning that these are peltor ultimate 10 model hearing protection and these have a 30 decibel noise reduction rating which is much higher than either of the other two i've shown these guys are 24 dB, and I had to dig a little because these are old, but I found an article that reports these as 20. If you buy them now that look like these, they claim to also be 24 dB. And if you're unfamiliar with that scale, uh, basically three decibels is twice as loud. So the difference between 30 and 24 is pretty dramatic as far as the amount of work that these things will do for you. And as far as decibel noise reduction stuff goes, these guys right here, the old school that everybody's pretty much seen, anywhere they've ever been. 3M default yellow wad up and stick in your ear guys that just feel like they're made out of packing material. These are good for 29 dB. And I think I bought this whole box of 30 pairs of these things for like 20 bucks. So if hearing protection is what's on your mind and you don't care about a whole lot else, then obviously you can spend a lot less money and get something that is actually better for your hearing. Bigger number, better off for you is what you're looking for on something like this if you're in the market. Speaking of in the market, when I was shopping for these guys, the, one of the primary reasons I bought them was because these were essentially the only reasonable cost option that was out there at the time. I think I paid right around 50 bucks for these, and if memory serves, the only other ones on the market that had any kind of good reviews at all were like 200. I just did a quick Amazon search uh, just to see if I could you know, find the other options today, and now there are boatloads of these things out there in this price range, so uh, you might want to shop around a little past these if this is all you had on your mind, because I'm not too terrified thrilled with them but before we go there let's cover the last thing that I really like about these things and I'll warn you right now that I might provide you with nightmare fuel so you might want to skip ahead a little bit or something but one thing I always do with my hearing protection before I put it on is I check inside the cups to make sure there's no creepy crawlies in there uh, I live in a part of the country where we get brown recluse spiders and if you have these sitting around for several months you never know what could decide this is a good home especially if you have them sitting over a you know, the edge of a bench or something, you actually kind of seal those off and make a house for them. Well, these things don't actually have any open cavity to the interior. Uh, not really. These seal pretty much all the way straight up to their plastic housings, and they do so pretty nicely. On my old ones, that was not the case at all. And these I haven't worn in, you know, a year now, so there might be creepy crawlies. But these, you can actually push that foam down and get all the way inside the speaker. In fact, you could just pluck that foam out and get all the way inside the cavity. So if these things are just hanging out for a while, who knows what kind of stuff could get in there and be living in there and crawl into your ear. By the way, that's also why I store these things on a hook, just to make things slightly less inviting for things to crawl in and live in there. Again, I apologize for the nightmares. But if you go with these 3Ms, that's not a problem because this is all nicely sealed, and I consider that a really big thumbs up there. And just to toss it out there, these Peltors are the same way, uh, except they're basically solid foam filled. So these cups are molded to the cans and then the foam goes pretty much the full depth so nothing can get into just my regular old school standard hearing protection guys <laughs> forgot these things were paired to my phone they just started playing ice cubes spontaneously anyhow that brings me to some things about these that i don't like and one of them is that they just don't play very freaking loud and I, I get it these are hearing protection they're they're not supposed to damage your hearing but at pretty much maximum volume even with their 24 db noise reduction when i'm mowing the grass if it's a low recording or an old recording uh, sometimes it's not as loud as i would like when i'm playing stuff back it's primarily through my phone again i use an android device and i'm primarily using an app called music olay so i can actually eq up and boost them 
But if you don't use an app like that and you're just you're using your default Google Play app or whatever, uh, these things are kind of on the quiet end. They, they do fine, you can hear stuff, but they, they certainly don't get very loud. And my next complaint is on the box, these things call themselves like hi-fi sound or high quality sound or high def sound or something. These things pretty much sound like crap. I didn't buy them because I thought they would sound awesome. You know, I, I have, you know, headphones like this if I actually just want to listen to music and these do actually sound really nice. The fact that they put anything like hi-fi or anything like that on the box is pretty ridiculous because they sound crappy. And I will delight your ears with how they actually do sound and a little bit of comparison. So we'll go between how these things sound playing and then just the file itself being played through the video editor. <laughs> that brings up another complaint I have with these things. Although they are very easy to pair and we'll demonstrate that right here. You just turn them on and when they turn on they will tell you that they're on in the condition of the battery. Then you just push the button twice and they'll go into pairing mode. Bluetooth pairing on. Then to turn them off you just hold the button down. Power off. However when paired to my Android device and I admit I haven't used 10 different devices so it could just be me. The microphone on these would not detect as a microphone. It wouldn't work the way the lav mic that I use for my videos works. It wouldn't work the way that my uh, headphone microphone works. It just wouldn't detect it so I wasn't able to record anything on the phone via the mic on these. And to be honest that's actually a pretty low priority for me. I don't really want to answer a phone call while I'm mowing the yard or working with air tools or whatever but it might be a higher priority for you. The other, other reviews and stuff I read of these before I bought them said that people were taking calls on them so I assume it works but it didn't work for me for reasons unknown. I've never actually tried to make a call on these, but just for fun, I paired them up to my laptop, which worked awesome, and did some recording in Audacity of just trying to talk to you guys while running a vacuum cleaner. So I'll show you how that worked out. The first thing I've noticed is I've just been setting up the vacuum and stuff like that is just how much background noise these things pick up. Uh, just me walking around, I can hear it on them. But anyway, this is just gonna be a regular residential normal vacuum. And I'm just gonna keep talking normally and see if you can hear me. Let's see if this microphone in them is even worth thinking about as a regular everyday thing or not. Um, welcome to the All Vacuum All the Time podcast, by the way. I'm usually good at talking until no one wants to listen to me, but now that I'm just vacuuming the hallway, I have nothing to say. Anyway, that'll probably get the point across. I gotta be honest, I was pretty surprised with how well that worked. I was just speaking at a normal volume in that segment, but if I were talking as loud as I thought I would need to to overcome the noise of a vacuum cleaner, I'd be running you guys deaf with that sample. The mic in these works incredibly well in a noisy environment, which for me is ironic because that's the one feature I can promise you that I'll never use, but maybe that's important to you. So now let's get into the meat of why I actually I'm so conflicted on these things. The primary thing I bought them for, they don't work where the crap for. They don't work basically at all, and that's why I returned the first set of them. I bought these primarily for mowing the yard. I mow the yard on a tractor. If you are new here, there's a playlist for the tractor I'll throw up there. It's a 50-year-old 1970s tractor. It's loud as all hell, and for whatever reason, these things cut out nonstop. It it can be sometimes they'll play for 10 seconds and drop out and then come back and then drop out and that'll happen every 10 seconds for a few minutes. Sometimes I might get an entire song played before that happens, but you can guarantee every time I mow the grass, they're going to drop out. And it's not particularly practical for me to try and get you an audio sample of them doing that. You'll have to take my word for it that the signal cuts in and out on them nonstop when I'm mowing the grass. My deepest frustration with that is they almost never cut out doing anything else. I wear these when I vacuum the house, like I just showed you guys a minute ago. I wear these when I run my carpet shampooer, which is even louder than the vacuum. I wear these when I'm running air tools. 
In, in fact, even when I'm vacuuming the house, I'll just have my phone like laying in the kitchen or something. I'll be in one of the back bedrooms and they don't drop out. So I can be like 40 feet away from my phone and these things are rock solid. But if I put my phone in my pocket and get on the tractor and run them, they just drop out nonstop. And even as a trial, I tried putting my phone in my pocket while I was running the vacuum and they won't drop out. So maybe there's something about the EMF and the electromagnetic frequencies generated by my tractor that pisses these things off, but they don't work worth a crap for what I bought them for. Uh, basically, I've kept them around, more or less just tolerating them because they work well enough. Uh, they do protect my hearing. I can listen to music while I'm mowing, which is something I wanted to do. And when I bought these, the other options were very, very expensive, or at least the other options I saw were very, very expensive. And I didn't want to spend $200 on a set of these when you know the $50 set probably would do or probably should do what I wanted them to do. I haven't bothered to contact 3M about this problem because I tried two sets of them and I got the same result both times. So I know it wasn't just defective. So if they wanted to exchange me out or warranty them, I have no reason to believe that they'd be any different on a third attempt. But that's the primary reason why I'm so strongly on the fence on these things. Run an angle grinder or anything else you want to do for hearing protection, these things are probably just fine. But for what I wanted to do, they suck. And I know I'm not alone on that one because a lot of the reviews you'll see out there that are negative reviews. I mean, on Amazon, these things are mostly positively reviewed, but the negative ones say the same thing I do, that they drop in and out all the time. They drop calls, stuff like that. A lot of people have straight up given up and gone to a combination of these things. You know, you put your headphones in, then you put your earmuffs on, you're good to go. The problem I have with that is that the earplugs themselves contact the hearing protection. It actually translates all that vibration, all that noise straight through. So I'm not really getting the benefit of the hearing protection. Plus the, you know, the hole that the cord opens up and the surround lets in noise too. So they're just not very effective and eh, just not a good solution for me. As is often the case in my videos, it was probably a little rambly and a little longer than it needed to be. I had some fairly complex thoughts about these things because I am conflicted. 99% of the time, these things are just fine, but the 1% that I use them almost 100% for, they are terrible. <laughs> uh, what I intend to do is probably let technology continue to march for a few more years. Uh, we'll get some more competition in the market out there and see if somebody comes up with a better mousetrap and maybe then I'll upgrade. But for now, this is what I'm gonna do. So should you buy these? I don't know. <laughs> Our second ever neutral tool review from Axis Tool Reviews. Hey, hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, I thank you for stopping in. And we'll catch you on the next one. I'm Max, that's Saddington Bear, and we make videos like this all the time. Here are a couple links to some other videos we've made, and we really appreciate you guys stopping in.